Uh, IPOs uh, usually come after a long road in the private markets. One of the firms still growing steadily in private hands is MessageBird, another member of what we're calling the Billion Dollar Plus Club. MessageBird is a nine-year-old cloud communications platform and one of a number of tech companies whose valuation jumped during the pandemic. Its Series C raise in October bumped the company's valuation to $3 billion. And joining us now is Robert Viss, founder and CEO of MessageBird, and Will Reed, general partner at Spark Capital. Will led Spark's investment in MessageBird Series C and now sits on the company's board. Welcome to you both, uh, guys. Good to have you this morning, Robert. Um, you know, we mentioned you guys have been at this nine years, been some acceleration, I, I take it, in growth over this period. Talk a little bit about specifically what market, what, what the tools are uh, that MessageBird provides and, and why it's been, uh, you know, experiencing this kind of growth during this period. Yeah, thank you. Well, look, I mean, first of all, um, as I believe sometimes this gets uh, forgotten uh, um, during what's going on, I mean, I'd just like to say, I mean, we're obviously super uh, fortunate to be on the right side of the market and our sympathy and heart goes out for everyone who's suffering um, in this crazy time. At MessageBird, you know, we're on a mission to make communicating with your business feel as natural, as easy as talking to your friends. And what we mean by that is that if you connect to any of your friends, you'd have the context of your last conversation. It'd be a very efficient way if you're meeting for coffee. Um, and businesses don't have that same efficiency. We're building the entire infrastructure for a business to be able to communicate with their customers and to make it feel as easy and natural as a friend. Okay, so it's essentially um, it, it automated messaging and, and, and customer service, customer communications type thing. How would a how would a, an individual encounter your software uh, out in the wild, so to speak? I mean, that's a good that's a that's a great question, and we talk about a lot on how to how to explain this to people. I mean, on the business side, the way that you should see this is like we give uh, businesses access to all channels that their customers are actually on. Then we focus on the data that that generates, and we create workflows, automation, and essentially killing repetitive tasks. Now, on the consumer side, what we really focus on is we make absolutely sure that when you interact with a business, you get a fast response um, back, and it's way more efficient than email or voice. So think about the time you've uh, sat on hold for 40 minutes, waiting for a representative to pick up the phone and help you with your problem. We think messaging is a way more efficient way to do that. Well, talk a little bit about what you saw here as the opportunity and what's happening in the market right now in terms of adoption of, you know, digitization of everything uh, and, and, and whether, in fact, it's going to continue this way. Yeah, totally. I, mean, I think. Oh, sorry, for Robert. Oh, sorry. Oh, <laughs> sorry, it's my will. Uh, look, I mean, COVID has been a tailwind for our business, oh. right? Uh, but it's been a, a result of 20 years of digital transformation. Um, at our company, we always move at speeds, uh, 200 miles an hour, 24-7, uh, 365 days a year. Yeah. Um, and when COVID hit, we, we had a surge in demand and we accelerated in the same way we always do. Um, so COVID helped our business. But the acceleration was long before COVID happened. Yeah, and and Will, I'm sorry if you if you would just weigh in on uh, I guess from a broader perspective as you're looking at uh, at other startups, other uh, opportunities in your portfolio. How does this all uh, kind of get, uh, get get played from here? I guess. Yeah, totally. Like like Robert alluded to, I think you know we continue to invest behind the same trends that we were investing behind pre-pandemic. Really, what we're seeing is sort of you know the next handful of years of digital adoption being pulled. To, to this year, when in you know in March, basically every business's storefront became their their digital footprint, and, and we think sort of the most forward-looking businesses are, are partnering with tools like MessageBird to you know, really differentiate and delight customers. Um, and you know, longer term, um, are these companies going to be uh, kind of best as a standalone or as incorporated into a full suite? I mean, you know, you can think of a very obvious example of something like Slack. It's going to get folded into to Salesforce. Well, is there is there a dynamic down the road where this is going to get recombined uh, and you're going to have basically a huge menu of these types of software tools within a big company? Yeah, I think, you know, if you if you. If you consider Messages Bird's market the CPaaS market or the communication platform the service market, like I think you're, what you're seeing now is consolidation around vendors like a Message Bird. And really, what it is is you know going from a world where you know you're working with one vendor for a particular geography uh, in a particular channel towards a world where you're consolidating spend around sort of one global omnichannel vendor where you can talk to any of your customers on any channel. And, and we think Message Bird is ultimately going to be a consolidator in this market versus one of the consolidated. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.